Canon's imaging group, headed by Go Takura, published their 2024 corporate strategy yesterday on March the 8th, 2024. And while these things can be incredibly oh so boring, there's some hidden Easter eggs to make it worth our while. We've got the usual market share figures, opportunities for growth, and then a big surprise about 12 more lenses coming. Let's go ahead and get those market share numbers out of the way. They're on page one, so they're obviously very important to Canon. It's important to note that Canon sees the market progressing from focusing on shooting and viewing images and video to experiencing and utilizing content. In these new areas, they plan to leverage new business opportunities. This includes 3D, VR, and AR systems, of which the Canon RF 5.2mm fisheye is certainly a part of, and also to focus on video-focused security cameras and volumetric video. And so that gives you the focus of the market segment that Canon sees itself being in, and it is largely mirrorless cameras. And before we get to the actual sales figures in terms of global market share, it's important to note that this is not for Canon Global, it's not for Canon Japan, it's just their imaging division. Canon has many other divisions, and this is the strategic plan, the 2024 strategic plan, just for the imaging division. We've seen many SEPA announcements lately talking about how much global share Canon has, Sony has, and Nikon. And according to Canon, they have 48% market share, and they've actually been dominating the top of the market for the past 21 consecutive years. Now that's for digital stills cameras. That includes point and shoot, DSLRs, and mirrorless cameras. But when it comes to the segment of mirrorless cameras, not everyone agrees. Canon says that they are number one, while Sony says they're number one. And this says something for the progress that Sony's made in the past 10 years, that they're battling it out for first place with Canon, and not second place with Nikon or third place with Panasonic. These graphics highlight that Canon's market share largely predominantly comes from mirrorless cameras, that the majority of their sales figures for digital cameras comes from mirrorless by 81% in 2023. So for all those of you out there that think that Canon only gets maybe 30 or 40% from mirrorless cameras, no, the majority here in 2024, the majority of cameras sold by Canon are clearly mirrorless cameras, not point and shoot, not DSLRs like the 5D Mark IV. Yes, you can still buy them new, but clearly the future is mirrorless and it's here. Who knows, maybe in a few years we won't have any DSLRs at all. There aren't too many on the market. And Nikon and Canon are the last two companies producing DSLRs. Well, okay, no, you're right. There is Pentex, which doesn't even believe in embracing in mirrorless cameras. They only produce DSLRs. All right, so back to the sales figures. Canon does predict an increase in camera sales slightly in 2024 and then in 2025. Although you'll notice there's a bit of a dip in operating profit in 2024, although that does recover in 2025 to 17%, a slight improvement over 2023. So let's go ahead and put a bow on this market share and profitability. Canon's imaging group is doing well, 17% operating profit. And what this tells us is one very simple thing, that as far as the imaging division is concerned, Canon's doing well. They're doing very well and they're not going anywhere, anywhere so or anytime soon. And in terms of R&D, that will keep humming along. And based on the number of patent filings that we've seen coming from Canon for the imaging group, I don't think there's any threat there. Now, from their copier division, yes, they are under a bit of strain, but if you ever look at their patent filings, I would say that a good 50 to 70% of the patent filings are actually for copiers, and there's about another 5 to 10% for medical systems, and then of course the rest are related to digital stills cameras. And now, for the most important piece of information covered in Canon's 2024 corporate strategy. While it's important that Canon is profitable to keep making gear, what's most important is what that gear will be. Now, let's take a look at the bottom of slide four. Notice that bar chart? Canon had a total of 26 lenses available for sale in 2021, RF lenses. And then they released seven more in 2022 and eight more in 2023 for a total of 41 RF lenses for sale. But take a closer look. Do you see those two pink bars? They tell us how many lenses that Canon will deliver in 2024 
and 2025. So me being a little bit right-brained, I measured them out based on the distance between points C and D, or line C and D, and applied that to line E and F, which is an exact duplication of line C and D. The difference between the height for C and D is just a tad bit more than the line for E and F. As we've got eight lenses in 2023, it's safe to sum up that we can expect seven to eight lenses to come here in 2024. But when looking at line GH, which represents seven lenses, we can see that the gap is much shorter, giving us a prediction of around five lenses. So there you go. Canon's dropped an Easter egg letting us know that we're going to be getting somewhere around 12 to 13 lenses by the end of 2025. And I know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait a minute, Simon, this is just some sort of bar chart that they threw together for marketing. It doesn't have any relation to what we could see in 2024 and 2025. There, that doesn't mean anything. And I hear you. That's a valid point. And it's plausible. But you see, when I measured the difference between the different lines, when I looked at 2021, 2022, and 2023, and I calculated the difference between each one, well, the numbers backed up that between the differences between the years of seven lenses and eight lenses from 21 all the way up to 41, everything fit perfectly. So trending from there to the pink lines, even though they didn't include a number, I think it's pretty safe to say that we can expect to see 12 to 13 lenses by the end of 2025. And if we look again at the trailing three years from 2021 to 2023 and 2024, well, we've kind of seen an average of around or a minimum of six lenses each year. So it does fit the model. I think it's fairly safe to say. So it's really nice to find that Easter egg in there. Uh, all the profitability stuff, whenever I cover news stories about Canon's market share growth or their profitability, I find it a little bit interesting because I'm a bit of a finance geek. I worked on Bay Street uh, for so many years uh, at one of the top leading firms, and I really enjoyed it. It was very exciting. And if you've ever come across a TV show, Traders, that's kind of what it felt like working in that environment. I really enjoyed it. So when I see the numbers, I get excited. But as, um, as a camera nerd, as a camera geek, what's really interesting to see here is that the number of lenses that Canon plans to come out with over the next couple of years is pretty significant. And based on all the, um, how shall we say, uh, comments, um, opinions on yesterday's video about RF lenses and the discussion that the head of Canon's imaging group, the same guy, Go Takura, um, a lot of you um, had a lot to say. And I, you know, I'm not gonna justify anybody's opinion or viewpoint because who am I to do so? We all have different needs. We all have different goals and objectives. And I understand all your viewpoints. I might have a different viewpoint, but I certainly get where you're coming from. But this, Canon having 41 lenses now and adding another 12 at a minimum by 2025, certainly seems to show that if they're confident that they have enough lenses and products on the street now with 41 lenses, then um, I think it's pretty likely that sometime before the end of 2025, we could see third-party lenses on the scene. And I know that's an awful long time for some of you to wait, and I know you're frustrated. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of like um, looking at a crystal ball. We don't know. What we do know is that Canon has been releasing on average six to eight lenses a year, and we can see a total of 12 to 13 by the end of 2025. Canon has come out and said that they're more than halfway to coming up with an agreement with some third-party lens makers, so it's highly likely that we could get some sort of agreement, some sort of announcement before the end of this year. Outside of that, I'm not willing to forecast. And if you're one of those people not willing to wait for new lenses, such as the 35 millimeter f1.2, and you're interested in lenses like the Sigma 35 millimeter f1.4, you'll be glad to know that there's an awful lot of really good sales on right now. The Canon RF 28 to 70 is $300 off, as is the Canon RF 15 to 35 millimeter f2.8. Now, taking a look at Nikon, the Nikkor 100 to 400 is $200 off, as is the 14 to 30. But more importantly, the price of the Nikon Z8 has dropped significantly by $300. This marks only the second time that Nikon's dropped the price of the Z8. But this doesn't compare to the price of the Canon EOS R5 at $29.99. And at Adorama, 
They'll even toss in a free 128 gigabyte CF Express Type B card and card reader. And of course, if you take a look at what Panasonic's got on sale, on some kits you can save up to around, what, $1,300, $1,600. It's just incredible. There's so many things on sale right now. And if you're tired of waiting for new gear, take a look at what's on sale right now. And all that gear that I've mentioned in this video, the R5, the lenses, everything that I've talked about, if you're looking at buying it from Adorama, b &H, or Amazon.com, then please consider using my affiliate links in the description down below. These guys right here. If you do click on any of these links and make any purchases, I can make anywhere from 2 to 12% back, which goes towards supporting this channel. And a big thanks to all of you that have used my affiliate links in the past. Uh, from, the bottom of, from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely thank you. It really makes a huge difference to this channel. I've only got 51,000 subscribers, which is not a lot when you look at Gerald Undone or Tony Northrup or Fro Knows. But what it does for me is it dramatically improves my income to the point where I can cover high-end gear such as the Canon EOS R5 equipped with the 50mm f1.2 f1 with the Ninja 5 on top of it, the 100-500, the 200-800, the 100mm f2.8. I strongly believe in not just reviewing things for a couple of weeks, a couple of days, but living with things day in and day out. So when you have a question about anything, I can talk from experience. Or when I'm doing a review on a certain lens, whether it's something affordable, like this manual focus 500 millimeter, I can tell you what it's like to shoot with this compared to high-end gear such as this 100 to 500. It's a true, truly terrific lens. This is an incredible lens, in fact. And what's really nice is if you're traveling, it's just amazing how much space it takes up. This will fit in a tiny camera bag, and that's with everything you would put around it to keep it safe. It's just truly amazing. Uh, and I'm not just talking about the size. The, the stabilization on this lens is, is unlike anything else. You just, it, it, you've got to try it to understand it. And of course, I'm not going to pick this guy up because I've hurt my arm, and I'm, from this angle, I won't be able to do it without hurting myself. But the 200 to 800 is, incre is an incredible lens. So I, I just want to take this moment to say a big thanks to all of you that have supported me using my affiliate links. It doesn't cost you anything in any way whatsoever. And if you click on a link and end up buying something else, well, that works too. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And as we move into another week here, or as we approach the weekend, we're, we are two months away from an announcement of the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. And what I would start to expect is more leaks coming out, more conversation, more discussion, on the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. And what we've had so far hasn't been very good. And I, there's a lot of contradictions in that last, last post by Canon Rumors. It doesn't really tell us a whole lot. 8K RAW, well, the R5 Mark I can do 8K RAW. 4K 120, the Mark I can do that as well. It doesn't talk about frame rates. It doesn't tell us details. It doesn't tell us if it can do 8K oversampled 4K at 120 frames per second. It doesn't tell us about ISO. It doesn't tell us whether it's a stack sensor. In fact, the last post said both BSI and likely stacked. Well, it's going to be one or the other. And yes, a stack sensor does have the BSI capabilities right within it. But what I'm trying to say is you'll refer to it as either a BSI sensor or a stacked. And what we're seeing right now is some contradictions. And even Craig at Canon Rumors said in the post that they compile this from multiple sources. So while they're known sources, He's not willing to put a CR3 on it right now. As we approach next week, as we approach the week after, in the next couple of weeks, as always, I expect stuff to start leaking out because we have dealer meetings. We have meetings with distributors, and these start to happen two months before an announcement, a month before an announcement. So finally, guys, we're going to get something concrete. We can actually find out what the R5 Mark II is going to be about, leaked images. And then eventually, right before the announcement, we'll have pricing. And of course, what I'm going to do is do a live stream covering the event. And I'm really looking forward to that. And the R1 is supposed to be coming out around the same time. I'd be really surprised if Canon does the R5 Mark II and the R1 in the same event. They are very different cameras. And yes, I know they did the R5 and the R6 together. But I think there's a bit more synergy, synergy between those two cameras. But again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to follow me uh, on X and subscribe so that way you can stay up to date on all the latest and greatest. Have yourself a great weekend. I do have one bit of bad news for you. Lock your doors, lock your windows because it happens every time this year somebody breaks into our house and steals an hour of our time. 
and there's not a thing the cops can do about it. I hate this. I wish we just abandoned daylight savings. Why do we need it? Anyhow, have yourself a great weekend. We'll see you again soon. Cheers.